Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to show you how you can connect towards your Google Cloud S3 storage pockets. So previously, when we introduced this feature S3 storage, we only showed you how to do it in Backblaze. And today we want to show you how to do it in Google Cloud as well, as a few users requested as such. You can find the integration if you go towards the left-hand side menu under integrations, then go towards data file storage, and then select the last one, which will be S3 storage. You will come towards this overview, and here you will see we need an, a few additional parameters in order to make a good success connection. We need the endpoint, we need the key, the secret, the bucket name, the region, and that should be it. So for the endpoint, it's really, really easy. It's just a generic URL, and that is HTTPS storage.google uh, AP, APIS.com. Okay, so that is the generic endpoint. More than this, you do not need for connecting your S3 storage. What you do need is to go inside of your Google Cloud project. And for me, it looks like this. We will then need to go towards the hamburger menu, the navigation menu on the top left corner, and then search for cloud storage. On the cloud storage, choose buckets. And here you will see that I already set up a bucket, as you can see. But let's delete this one. And let's just start from scratch. And there we go. So now that we deleted the previous bucket, let's create a new bucket by pressing the button. From here, we can give the bucket a name. So let's say you chat and let's go with demo. There we go. And then you can also add labels if you want to. Uh, I will leave it as is. We can then say continue. From here, we will need to select a region. So for, for example, if you are and needing to comply with GDPR, right? Then you will need to use Europe region like I am. So under the multi-region, we can just go with Europe. There we go. And then say, press continue. From here, we can have different kinds of storage classes. I just leave it at default, okay? So let's continue. Then we will need to have an access control. And here we will need to choose the find grain control. You can also change this once the bucket has been created. So if you already have a bucket uh, which has the uniform access control, we will need to change that afterwards. But let's choose find grain for now. And then also choose how to protect object data. So we have data protection, right? And for this one, we have the object version for version control or the retention for compliance. So for prevention, the, the deletion or mod modification of the buckets objects for a specific period of time. So this could also be good for GDPR reasons where you have files inside, which you will need to automatically delete after a certain set number of time, which can be found in your own privacy policy. Um, so let's just go with object versioning for now. And I will just leave everything as default and let's go towards data encryption. And from here, we are just going to go with a, uh, let's see, with a Google Managed Encryption key, okay? We can say, press create. Public access will be prevented. So for UChat to be able to access the S3 storage buckets, the access needs to be public, okay? So that is something that we cannot work around because otherwise we cannot connect over those API endpoints. So we need to uncheck the enforce public access prevention on this bucket, okay? Let's say confirm. And now we are going to create the bucket, it's now currently processing, and now we have the bucket created. Inside the bucket, you will see that you have several different kinds of tabs, which you can use. And as you can see, we have a few different kinds, right? So we have storage class is standard, public access is subject to object ACLS, and then we also have a protection objects versioning. Uh, here we have the objects. So if you want to upload files, they will basically be shown here. You can also upload folders or, cre or create a folder. Uh, under configuration, you will see the entire configuration set, as you can see here. So for the location, we can already see that we can fill in this parameter inside of UChat. So we can just copy this and then just go with region AU, right? We also have the bucket name because the bucket name is, of course, the one that we named the bucket as such. So we can also use that. So let's copy that. So the only things left now are the key and the secret. So how do we create them? You can do so by going towards the permission section. And because we already have the public access subject to object ACLS, uh, we can go down and you will see your uh, many, or for me at least there are many service accounts, right? You will need to have a service account. So I will select this service account. And for this service account, it is important that you have the following permissions enabled. So we have the storage object admin, we have the storage 
object creator and we have the storage object user. The way you can set that is by going towards the hamburger menu again, go towards I am an admin and then go towards service accounts. Now, if you cannot manage your permissions from the service account section, uh, it means that the permissions are inherited from the connected admin user. So if you go towards I am, you will be able, you, or at least you should be able to set up the required uh, permissions. So you can just go and say edit principal. And then from here, you can add a new role. So just say add another role and then search for storage. So here you can just search for those four roles, those four permissions that you need to have. I already have them, so I will leave them as is. But you can see, I will just delete them as well. But these are the roles that you will need. So these are the roles that you will need, the object admin, the object creator, and the object user. Once you have them, you can go back towards your storage. So in order to access the bucket itself by creating an API key and a secret key, we need to go towards the cloud storage settings. And then from here, go towards interoperability. From here, if we scroll down, you will also you will also notice that I already have a key for service accounts here, right? You will already see that I have two service keys here, but we can create a new key. Okay. Then we'll have an access key, which we can just copy and then paste inside the key section. And then we have a secret key. So the secret key we can just copy. And then from here, we can just copy and paste it directly inside. Now, if we did everything correctly, if we say press save, we should have a verified status. So let's take a look. And there we go. So now we can use the S3 storage of Google Cloud directly inside of your Flow Builder by uploading files. You will directly save them towards your S3 bucket inside of your Google Cloud project. If you have any questions, do let us know and we'll try to help you out as soon as possible. For now, have a great day. Take care and talk soon.